There are certain knots that everybody should know, especially this one. This one actually may save your life. Very unlikely, but it is possible. This knot is known as the king of knots. It's called the bowline, and it's spelled bowline. And this is a knot that's used in, uh, by seamen. They use it on the sea, they use it, uh, sailors use it. It's something that can be used for multiple reasons. It can be used as, sometimes it's actually used in climbing, although in the last several years, some people have died using it. There's probably a better one, which is the figure eight knot, but some still use the bowline. But regardless, it could be something that you might need to know in very difficult situations, but it also is beneficial in all kinds of things. You can use it as an anchor point, something maybe you'd hook it under your vehicle, for something like the trucker's hitch. You could use it like uh, someone might do if you if you have a boat. You can use it to throw around a mooring. You know, uh, obviously it's not a mooring, but you could, you could use it just, and the great thing about a good knot that's different from just a random kind of overhand knot, the standard knot that everybody kind of knows, you just twist a knot around, uh, twist the rope around. With a good knot for the right purpose, there's a correct knot for the correct situation. And if you're using the right knot, in general what you'll find is when it's put under a, a serious tension and a load, number one, it's not gonna come undone, which is very important. And number two, in most cases, it will still be very easy to come along afterward and untie so that you don't have to cut your knots. Because when you have quality uh, cordage or you have a quality rope, cutting it. I mean, it gets to be very expensive. Some rope is over a dollar a foot. And so, I mean, cutting a section of it off, you're cutting off maybe multiple dollars every time you do that. So having a good knot is something, like I said, that should stay taut or it should, should stay together. And secondarily, it should be easy to come undone in most situations given standard pressure. And so this is a very important one. It can be used as something to tie around yourself in a in just a pinch. If you were in a situation where you, where you weren't out climbing, you wouldn't want to use this normally just like that for climbing. But I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to show you how to tie it around something. And then I'm going to share with you also the simple method that most people end up learning. It's kind of the Boy Scout method that you would learn with a little story along with it. But the other versions I actually find to be even more simple than the kind of Boy Scout method. So I'm going to share with you each one of these and my hope, I'm going to show you one of the one of the differences. Sometimes you'll watch videos. If you've ever watched any knot videos, sometimes people, you know, they, they do things like this. They say, okay, so that is how you tie a bowline. All right, did, did you see that? And you think, uh, no, no, I, I, didn't, I didn't see that. And even if you did see it, you saw it from the angle you're looking at right now. And I don't know, you may be much smarter than me. You probably are. But when I see it from the opposite direction, when I'm tying a knot, I see it right here, not from where you're looking. So what I want to make sure is that you see it from the point of view that I would be tying it so that you can tie it the exact same way. You don't have to try to reverse it in your head while you're trying to tie it. So let's go ahead. We're going to we're gonna tie these multiple knots and uh, hopefully you'll get the idea how to do it. So this particular knot is the knot that you could use in a bind. Someone falls off a cliff you might be thinking, I don't, I don't think you fell off a cliff there. No, I'm at the bottom of my deck. But you get the idea. You're imagining with me for a moment that I've fallen off and maybe, maybe I'm, I'm hanging on with one hand to the cliff here. And so the only way to get back up is, well, I can climb, but it sure would be a lot safer if somebody would throw me a rope and then I would be able to tie it around myself. But the difficulty is if they threw that rope down to me and here I am and I'm holding on. Now I'm told that back in the day they used to with Boy Scouts, maybe they still do it, that if you could tie a bowline around your body, kind of a safety bowline with one hand, you'd get kind of some, I don't know, extra credit, award, something like that. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's actually very, very easy. And you can do it, you can learn to do it, and you can learn to do it with your eyes closed. It's very simple and can be done with one hand. It's actually my favorite way of tying the bowline. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. So someone throws the rope down to you, you've got the rope there, and then you can't use your other arm, so you can, you can stick the rope in your armpit, you can reach around back, and you can pull it around yourself like this. Then you can simply, and I'm moving my arm so you can see it in the video, but you take about eight or nine inches of the working end in your right hand, and I'm gonna show it to you here just so you can see it a little better, but you simply take that one and you reach over 
literally just go right over top of the other one. And now that you've done that, reach your hand under back towards your body and just like this, and then bring it over toward the other side where it started. Then take the working end, wrap it around the back and then bring it like through. And once, you, once you're holding it here, you can simply bring your hand through just like that and you will have a bowline wrapped around your body and that can be used to that one's a little long but if you were climbing it could at least catch on your armpits here uh, just to give you an idea but that is is a bowline i'm going to show you one more time so take uh eight or nine inches of the working end in your right hand then you simply I'm just showing, I'm putting this here so you can see it, but you wrap it over top of the standing end and then you bring it underneath back toward your body, right through back toward your body. And then you wrap it around the backside and it comes around. Once you wrap it around, you grab it here. Then you bring your hand simply back through. That's probably the trickiest part. You bring it back through and you've got your bowling. That one's a little tighter there. That's that's a better one. So now you've got your bowling. You see you've got your standing end inside the body compartment here. That is a standard bowling. If it were on the outside, that would be considered a Dutch bowling or a cowboy bowling. Um, but we want the standard bowling here. That's what we're going for. And it's really, really quite simple. And so hopefully you got that. If not, I'm gonna show you one more time. So you could do it over top, back towards you, around the backside and with your hand again and then simply pull it through and there you go you've got your bowling kind of a safety bowling that you could use obviously if you were literally climbing you wouldn't want to do it like this you want a harness and you could potentially use a bowling more likely you'd use the figure eight knot but this is just in a situation where you're not really climbing someone just fell off a cliff and this is this is your only option so that's the bowling that you could use in this particular situation i want to show you how to tie a bowling around an object see if it were big enough i could throw it around here like around a mooring or something on a dock that would hold it in place but in this situation I can't, I wanna actually put it around the leg of the chair. So there's another very easy way to do it. And I wanna show you how to do that. So take the working end, bring it around the object clockwise that you're looking to tie it onto. And then take your left hand, put your thumb under the rope, your fingers, uh, your palm facing down, pointing toward the working end. Now, then take it and simply turn it just like this. And once you have that, we wanna make a slip knot in the standing end. The way we do that is we take the bottom and you have to do this side, not this side. You take the standing end, the part that's going away from you, and you put it right up through there, and then you have a slip knot. So if I wanted to get rid of it, uh, you know, I could just go like this. But once again, so I put my hand, my palm facing down, thumb under the rope, twist it, then bring the link that is going away back up through and then you have your slip knot. Now once you have that slip knot, you can take your working end and simply bring it right through and once once you bring it through, then pull it tight over here. Just hold it together on the other one on the inside of it and once you do it, pull the standing end and as you pull it, look what happens. It by default just turns in to a bowline. So there, there you got your bowline and now it's, now it's anchored to this object. You could do that around a tree or any kind of stationary pole or device that you have, something that you're using. That's how you tie it on there. Very, very simple. I'll show you one more time. So we, we bring the working end around clockwise. Then we take our palm facing down with our thumb under the standing end, we twist it, then we take the standing end up through and we make our slip knot. Once we've made our slip knot, we just simply bring it right through and then what you do is you hold it like this. Once you have it held together, then you take the standing end and you pull it and it goes right over top of it and makes your bowline. There is your Boland around a stationary object.
Now I want to show you the standard way that everybody's taught, you know, from a child, if you're in Boy Scouts, it's kind of the Boy Scout method. So you take your working end, you come off of it a little ways, and what you can do is you twist the rope with your right hand, twist it towards your body. Twist it towards your body and it will create a hole like this. This becomes the hole that the rabbit, the working end they call the rabbit in this illustration, the working end comes up, your rabbit comes up, he runs out of the hole, and then this end is called the tree. They call this the tree. He ends up running behind the tree or around the tree, I'm trying to make it so you can see it, and then he, as he runs around the tree, he comes back, gets afraid, runs back down into the hole, and then if you pinch the rabbit against the rope in here or the cordage and then you pull the standing end like this as you pull it tight then you have your standard bowlin remember it's always on the inside here I'm going to show you one more time so you have your working end you come off of it a ways put your hands like this and you simply twist tw your right hand towards your body and it will create a hole for our rabbit as you do that, the rabbit always comes under, so you kind of lift it up. He runs out of the hole, back behind the tree, and then when he comes around the tree, I'm only holding it like this for the video's sake, I wouldn't do it like this, then he comes back down and he comes into back down in the hole because he got afraid. Then you pinch it against the rope over here, and then you pull the standing end, and as you pull it, that will create your bowlin. Now, incidentally here, just to show you very quickly, this is a standard bowlin, but if you ever wanted to do a cowboy bowlin or the Dutch uh, mariner bowlin, basically what you do is you, you come back out and as, as he comes up through the hole like this, instead of running around the back side of the tree this way, he runs around the front, but he still ends up going around the back this way, and he comes back down through the hole, and there you have, this is called the Dutch bowling and, and basically the difference is is that the standing or the working end ends up being on the outside instead of on the inside the standard bowling is you'll have it on the inside of the knot so that's how you do it if you like this video hit the subscribe button god bless and have a fantastic day